Like life, I believe that there should be no dress rehearsal, so I've written material down that I believe if you adhere to it or at least consider it as appropriate life philosophy, you'll have a whole lot easier time. Doesn't mean that you're not gonna have bumps in the road, we all have them. We cannot control other people. We can only manage how we manage others, or how we respond to our environment. So, number one uh, attitude of life, adherence for a good time, whatever, is um, to consider that all there really is is love and bliss. But everything else goes on. At some level, that it is true. I've experienced instant nirvana. I never got it again. It's that, that's all I realized. And a connection to God. God is all expansive and we're all connected to God. It's amazing. So we make up everything else for entertainment and educational purposes. That's got to be what it is. So you have to ask yourself, okay, what's amusing by, about this? What am I getting out of it? Is this servicing others in some way, shape, or form? And it's not in your control or your... You can't manage how other people handle what you do in life, but you must be aware that you do affect other people. But yes, consider number one. Consideration number one. Maybe these aren't adherences so much or as considerations. I think it's the ten considerations to consider. Uh, so get the popcorn if you're being entertained. Um, if you're learning something, find out what it is you're learning. And find out what the perspective is. What's your point of view? When somebody else is telling you what they think, then you're discovering what their point of view is. Their point of view may be inaccurate according to yourself, but you're finding out what it is. You're finding out that person's point of view. So, let's see what number two consideration is. Don't give yourself a hard time about anything. Don't. You're going to mess up. And you might, you know, take a look at, in the mirror. I've got one right there. And, you know, <laughs> I, I can say, oh, I love you. Yeah, and do, do the check-in thing. But don't give yourself a hard time. Don't beat yourself up. Don't. Don't do it. Do not do it. Jesus got off the cross. That's what he was trying to tell us, amongst many other things is that he suffered. He did the great suffering, so we don't have to. Thank you, hallelujah, Jesus. Um, and then, you know, one of the things that I have noted down here as an anecdote side thing is that, what did the Oracle of Delphi say? Number one, know thyself. Number two, there's like two pillars, know thyself. And to and nothing in excess. Know thyself, nothing in excess. Okay? Number three consideration. Okay. Stay and sustain love and enjoyment. That is so important. Stay in and sustain it. Practice. Practice enjoying the moment. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. <laughs> Because lower vibrations that are ruled by fear will actually change, a, they, will, they will create a physical change in you. So that you know, you contract. You can feel it in here, like when you're, well, in the chest. So when you are feeling contracted, you're not in the love, you're in the fear. And when you feel expanded, you're in a lighter, brighter frequency and so much easier to have a fulfilling life. So higher beings operate in the love. Ask for God's help. Bring lighter beings into your life. Be open to the possibility that there are God's sanctioned guidance. There's angels. Open up to it. And when you're in the love, it can be as simple as waking up every single day and appreciating, like being really grateful. You can do this at bedtime. You can do it at any time. Any time is a good time. You can, when it, when it comes to your partner, just like maybe write a book and like, not write a book, but enter into a book 
somewhere or you can look at it every day, three things you really love about them. It could be something physical like the way their hands open when they're talking. They, they could be gesturing and you just like it. Or it could be that they tell other their friends that when you're when they, you meet that person's your your partner's friends, they've already heard some nice things about you. So they they say things like, "I'm so glad to meet you," things like that. All right, here's a consideration: relax, let people be people, let them be who they are. There's nothing you can do otherwise, you know, massage your neck and get all that tension out that you can control them. You can't. You can't. You can't. All right, here's another consideration. Recognize and know that you have a divine nature. You are connected to God. Ta-da! Simple as that. Recognize and acknowledge it. And then be that. Be yourself. Be that beautiful light being in a physical body. Ah, in a way, everything you manifest is your way of rubbing shoulders with God. You bump up against your boundaries to find out what it is you're supposed to work with. You've got conflicts to find out what it is that needs to be changed. You're perfecting yourself. Yep, remember the Oracle at Delphi? <laughs> Know thyself, it was the pillars to get there. One of them said, this is my memory. Maybe somebody else knows better, but know thyself, nothing in excess. Keep it balanced. All right, number six. Ah, observe silence. Go within, meditate, observe nature. Sit at attention, AKA meditating. If you're from a place that doesn't want to meditate, you sit at attention, mindfulness, walk mindfully, observe, go into nature, connect, observe, observe silence, observe silence. You can observe other things, you can observe your actions and your life choices, you can observe action consequence. Another really good thing about observing, besides observing silence, you know, you want to do that, but in that observation of silence, you might want to jot down in your book three wonderful things about yourself every single day. And celebrate your accomplishments, recognize your successes, especially when you're getting down on yourself about not getting somewhere. Oh, I've done that so many times. It's frustrating. You've got to celebrate yourself. You've got to. Look. Henna, I'm celebrating the fact that I can use henna and cover up my gray hair. <laughs> um, I have very few gray hair at my age. Knock on wood. Um, number six? Ooh, and a half. Absor watch the signs. God and all that is the great spirit. They leave signs. They tell us things. You ask this question, you're going to get answers. Make sure you're listening. <laughs> God doesn't make mistakes. You're not a mistake. Things that fall in front, it's sort of like be observ observant. Be observant. Interpret things correctly. Ask for direction. You know, keep saying, okay, is this... You know, I once asked, um, where do I go from here? And in my step number six, not the six and a half, this is what I got. This is what the universe said to me. He said, go lovingly. <laughs> I was expecting north, south, east, west, this choice, that choice, but instead I got lovingly. All right, consideration number seven, having no regrets. <laughs> Again, action consequence. It's such a waste of energy to regret anything. You learn something. You can't take it with you. You're going to die. So what if you sold that 1986 classic BMW and now you have a newer version that costs more money to repair because that one was in mint condition? Somebody else is enjoying it. You're not. But somebody else is and you learned a thing or two. It's much better to have that mistake than a much bigger one. All right? You can do damage control. You can go, oh, I'm not going to do that anymore. Um, so forgive yourself and others. 
you know, with the regrets, you, you may have really hurt somebody badly and you can say you're sorry. Or if you don't know them or they're dead and they, they passed on, you can do this thing called Ho'opono Apono. It's, it's, it's a Hawaiian and um, look it up because I'm not going to go into it. That's a whole other subject. It's H-O with like a thing and then an O-P-O-N-O -O with another accent. That way or this way, I can't see which way you see me. And then O, O, P, O, N, O. So I'm gonna give it to you again without the accents. H, O, O, P, O, N, O, P, O, N, O. Ho, a pono, pono. It's pretty amazing. All right, consideration number eight. Feed your spirit. You know those you driving down the road and you see the over, scenic overpass and you don't do it, do it. Stop. Go to that scenic overpass as long as it's safe and it's far enough off the side of the road and you're not going to get killed and you don't just like leave your motorcycle or, or your body where someone coming around the corner can just like take you out. But yes, go take a look at that scenic overpass. Okay? If somebody, if you do it with someone who you're arguing with, don't get too close to the edge. <laughs> All right. Um, please your soul. Yes, please your soul. Feed your spirit. What is it? And that's when you're doing number six where you're sitting at attention and you're going within for silence. That's what, get your little book and have it near you and go in with that consideration of number six, which is to connect silently. Find out what it is that, that your spirit wants. You know, we all have goals, but what about your spirit, right? Yeah. You know, nobody ever said they spent, wish they had spent more time at the office on their deathbed. That's just, that's the truth. They have regrets, and one of them is not spending enough time with family and friends, or going on a scenic overpass, or enjoying their backyard, or playing with their hair. Like I like to do. <laughs> I actually really like playing with my hair. Um, yeah. So there's priorities. There's there's God's priorities, others' priorities, and your priorities. You know, as long as you're not damaging yourself or others, you know, consider all of that. All right, let's get on to, to number nine. Um, you can play, let's just pretend. It's not the same as playing the glad game, which is all, also great, but playing the glad game is also the gratitude list. So... Um, I just digress. Let's stick with number t Play. Play. Find a way to play. Play. Find a way to play. There is enough play. There's play therapy out there. Find it. Use your imagination. Entertain possibilities. Think about things. Be playful. You know, remember when you were a kid? Remember that. All right, get yourself a hula hoop. And don't do the stupid hula hoop exercises. I'm not saying they're stupid for people who are really good at it. I'm just saying you don't have to get a video to get a hula hoop and learn how to use it again. All right, number 10, believe in magic. If I believe in magic, do 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 do. I don't know how that song goes, but believe in magic in yourself. Believe it. And then when you do your magic, make sure it's white magic. I'm talking about white magic. I'm talking about God-sanctioned white magic. The kind that you are making sure your magic is of the right variety, which is no harm to yourself or others. And be completely open to the glory of your being. <laughs> and whatever it is, whatever it is. Like, always do something now that brings you passion and being the magic. So those are the considerations, 10 of them in under 15 minutes. I hope you listened. Your comments are welcome. <laughs> and my, uh, my work here is to share what it is that after my 51 years, I wish that I had known it earlier. So I'm sharing. Thank you very much. Bye for now. Oh, I got to push the button harder. I'll see you next time. Harder still. <laughs> Okay, there we go.